Good morning, Florida. Good morning. When survivors speak, when survivors speak, my name is Sabash Katil. Let me just cut to the chase. We know why we're here, because we know hurt people hurt people. We know that, right? We also know that healed people can heal people. But to heal people, we need intention, investment, and a better vision for public safety in Florida. Am I right? Yes. And we need your voices. Yes. In 2019, your voices helped pass one of the most significant public safety reforms in Florida in 20 years. You did that. Our voices did that. Yes. And, we, and we hope to do that again. I have the honor today of being joined with our members and our leaders, Ms. Patricia Ward, Ms. Pastor Wanda Gomez, and Ms. Sharon Emmers. And I'd also like to thank Senator Chevron Jones, Representative Kayan Michael, and Representative Angie Nixon for being with us today. By being with us, that means being with 13,000 crime survivors across the state of Florida. As we talk about new safety solutions, as we talk about a better probation system, as we talk about making sure that folks that exit the justice system do so better than when they went in. Amen. And the criminal justice system, where the more emphasis is placed on our healing and us being able to put our lives and our community's lives back together. Is that why we're here? Amen. So there's a lot of folks I'm gonna have the privilege to introduce, but first I'd like to bring up our CSSJ member, Ms. Patricia Ward, to say a few words. Thank you, Savas. I am Patricia Ward, and I am a survivor. In 1997, when he was 16, my son, Curtis Wilson, was murdered. For two years, I had to fight for basic information about his murder investigation, including investigation his name, and where Curtis' belongings were. After a long battle, I finally obtained more information on Curtis' death and the investigation. In one of those periods of pain and agony, grieving over my son, I decided to turn pain into purpose. I wrote down the basic information I wish I had when my son was first killed. That information turned into a bill that I called Curtis Law. I didn't give up my fight to make sure that no parent endured what well, I had to. The first week of session, HB 233, hmm, known as Curtis Law, passed. Yeah. It's first committee. I still miss my son to this day. He was a type of child who loved to swim and teach others how to swim. Many of us have similar stories about the people we lost. I am using Curtis Law to not only keep his name alive, but for all, all of us. The parents that have to go through what I went through. I am here today as a testimony that when survivors be, change happens. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ward. Next, I'd like to introduce Rep. Kion Michael. Thank you all so much, and thank you, Ms. Ward, for being here. Uh, I didn't know I was going to see you. <laughs> it has been my honor to sponsor Curtis's Law uh, Bill 230, HB 233. 
Thank you all for your support. God bless every one of you all that's here, everyone that has um, suffered the loss of a loved one. And I look forward to working with Ms. Ward and bringing this on across the board. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rob Michael. Next, I'd like to introduce um, Pastor Wanda Gomez. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I am Wanda Gomez, and I'm a proud member of Crime Survivors for Just Safety and Justice. I'm here because I understand what all of you are here. I understand what it means to be a survivor of domestic violence because in 2017 and 16, the father of my child stabbed me five times. 2007, the law was changed so the domestic violence could get three days off from work to do things like file an order of protection. In 2017, my 16 years old was murdered. The law didn't provide me three days off then because the law didn't apply to parents who lost a child. To make worse, to this day, I don't have the basic information about my son case. I still don't know who killed him or why. That's why I support Curtis Law today. I also understand why we need to change our probation laws. In 2013, after being in the hospital for three blood transfusion, I was taken away from my special needs child after a violation of probation for an issue with my driver license that I already resolved. In 2019, our voices hope to change the probation system, but more needs to change. I am here because I feel all of your pain, and I know everything we fight for today will help many of us. I'm here because when survivors speak, Thank you. Thank you so much. Next, I'd like to introduce Rep. Angie Nixon. So, I, hello, everyone. I'm Rep. Angie Nixon, proudly representing Florida House District 13 in Duval County. <laughs> I see so many. So many of my Duval folks in the audience today. Um, and, and District 13, uh, I come from a city, District 13, and a district where people have their own survivor stories. And I know many of you here today. Um, thank you so much for inviting me to this very powerful event and allowing me to speak. I also want to acknowledge uh, my colleague, Representative Diane Hart from House District 63 in Tampa Bay. And also uh, acknowledge Tallahassee Commissioner Curtis Richardson, <laughs> who are standing before you today as well, just in support and allyship. You all know from your own experiences that a public safety system that neglects crime survivors will fail to keep us safe. Your voices must be heard by my colleagues and other policymakers whose responsibility is to keep us safe. True safety comes with investments in trauma support, violence prevention, intervention, and rehabilitation. Only then can we end the cycles of trauma and tackle the root causes of crime that plague too many of our communities. I also want to add mental health to that as well. We should build on our previous progress by passing bills like Curtis's Law and finally ensuring that the families of homicide victims are able to remain informed about the cases involving the loss of their loved ones. Many of you all may not know, but I lost two of my loved ones to gun violence as well. My cousins, my uncles, both of my uncles were sick and distraught and even more so hurt because there was often radio silence that came from law enforcement in terms of learning more about the case and, and who, who hurt and killed their, their two sons. That just 
prolongs the healing that they need to move forward in their lives. And we have to stop that. We should also work to improve our probation system, expanding the alternative sanctions programs to improve safety and save taxpayer dollars, especially if we care about being fiscally conservative in this house. <laughs> Let us also finish the job of sealing arrest records that don't lead to convictions so we can allow people to give back to local economies. With the courageous voices and the power we see here today, from all of you, I have no doubt that change will happen. Because when survivors speak, change when survivors speak, change when survivors speak, change thank you. Thank you, Rep. Nixon. Next, I'd like to introduce Ms. Sharon Emmers. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I never thought of myself as a victim, even though I had been victimized several times in my life. I was molested as a child, but nothing ever happened to my abuser until almost 20 years later. I had been carjacked. The small business I owned was robbed at gunpoint, but I didn't let being a victim define me. I always fought not to be a victim. I am a survivor. I want to see every person that is a victim become a survivor. I want all survivors to get the support they need from their community through their churches and their loved ones. I want survivors to have basic information from law enforcement like Curtis's Law will provide to parents of murdered children. I want survivors to have the ability to know what happened to them won't happen again. I want survivors to have the ability to get counseling and healing resources to put their lives back together, regardless of where they're from or what their income is. When survivor speaks, change happens. And as a survivor, not a victim, I will speak up for a better and safer Florida for all of us. When survivors speak, change happens. Thank you so much. And I would like to introduce our leader, our fearless leader, Vice President of Alliance for Safety and Justice, Oswald Thomas. As a survivor of gun violence, I know your pain, I know your struggles, but I also know your commitment to making our community safe it's also making sure that we get the services and resources that we need. Also know that these times are extremely difficult for so many of us in our communities. Many of you are here for yourselves. You are also here for your loved ones. I want to bring up four survivors to help us light a candle for all survivors. Trinice, Elliot, Megan, Samaya, and Regina. My name is Trinice Bryant. I light this candle on behalf of all childhood sexual assault survivors. My name is Samaya, and I light this candle on behalf of all survivors who have lost loved ones to violence. Hello everyone, my name is Regina Gigi Williams and I light this candle on behalf of everyone who are survivors of domestic violence. Thank you. Good morning everyone, my name is Megan Hobson and I light this candle for all the survivors of gun violence. Hi everyone, I'm Nikita White and I also light the candle for survivors of gun violence. Amen. Good morning, my name is Elliot Saunders, and I light this candle. And I don't have a candle, but I have a cell phone light. Okay, so I light this candle in reference to all victims of violence. Again, all victims of violence. 
So please join me in a moment of silence. And as we stand here in silence, please feel to bring and call out the names of your loved ones who you want to bring in this space. I see you, I hear you, and we love you. So when we call out the name of our loved ones, we're calling them out to bring change to the state of Florida. We're calling them out to let policymakers know our communities are suffering, our communities need the resources and services that we need to heal. So when Ms. Patricia talk about passing Curtis Law, it's about dignity. Yes. Dignity to give families and loved ones basic information yes. about their case. When we talk about the need for services and resources, we talk about developing more trauma recovery centers across the state of Florida. When we talk about the organizations in this room who is doing the work on the front lines to violence, we are talking about investing in those organizations. Yes, 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 yes. We talk about the need to change our criminal justice system. Yes. Yes. You know, we spent decades of, and spent billions of dollars into a criminal justice system that doesn't keep us safe. We spent billions of dollars on a criminal justice system that do not help crime victims. At all, at all. We're relying on a justice system that provides so many barriers for victims to get the resources and services that they need. We're relying on a criminal justice system that provides so many barriers for people who are coming out of the justice system to get housing, to get jobs, things that help our economy, and the things that we know will stop the cycle of violence. Because when people can work, that's feeding their family. When people got safe housing, that's providing protection and safety for themselves and their family. Yes. When survivors get the resources that they need, it helps us heal and it helps stop the cycle of violence. Yes. Yes. So that's why we're here changing, calling to change for our probation system. That's why we're here to call to make sure that individuals can get their record sealed yes. so they can access jobs, yes. education, yes. and housing. Yes. And that's why hundreds of survivors are here today to let our voice be heard. So when survivors speak, change when survivors speak, change what do we want? Change. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Change. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Change. When do we want it? Now. And we demand lawmakers in this building yes. 
to vote on policies that make change. Yes. To vote on policies that help keep our community safer. Amen. And as victims, we know what to keep us safe. Amen. It's resources, right. it's services, yes. it's employment, yes. it's housing, yes. it's youth programs. Yeah. It's investing in the things that we know that keep us safe. 